Yesterday, I had a conversation with a top 1% real estate agent about who should not buy a home in 2023. That led me to thinking about who should not buy an investment property in 2023. And to have this conversation with me, I brought on the one and only Anna Kelly. How are you doing, Anna? I'm great. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So uh, just a long story short, you and I have been buying properties for decades. We help people do that. Uh, but I think it's also fair to say that you and I would would coach up or advise some folks not, again, not to buy an investment property in 2023. So I thought you and I should talk about it. We'll play the game of ping pong. You'll go. I go. As the guest, I'll let you go first. So Anna, who should not buy an investment property in 2023? People who are looking for cash flow and can't find cash flowing deals. Yeah. yeah. Because you, mortgage you, rates are high and prices haven't fallen yet in a lot of different market. Yeah. That, that's the, yeah. Again, being in the game, if the numbers don't work, the numbers don't work. Don't beat up your spreadsheet. If the yield is, if, if, if you do all the work and all you're finding is average or bad, don't do the deal, right? We only do great deals here. Right. And uh, it's hard. It's it's not easy, right? When when you figure out average, it's average for a reason, right? And you've got to go find and or create great deals. So I totally agree with that. My Absolutely. number one, uh, my number one is uh, I see this a lot. People who are almost desperate, they need a home run, right? They need to turn a little into a lot. And what I teach and talk about, um, that's not it. We're we're not the get rich quick. We're not the we're not the ten x in a weekend. Um, this is not going to the moon. We, we talk about 30 year debt, cash flow day one, 10, you know, if you want to, uh, recycle capital at some point in the future, we highlight that the first three to five years are slow. Uh, but I see some people that come that just have a fire behind them and they want to get rich quick or they, or they, they feel like they need it. They're almost desperate. I'm like, Whoa, you need to go figure that out because, one rental at a time or buy and hold real estate is not that. So you're you're mismatching there. So so be careful. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really important. I think, you know, people get really hungry and we've come off the top, which is like fear of missing out. And the sky is just going to always keep rising. And the reality is, as we've talked about on this show multiple times, is we're heading in for some economic pain. And so you've got to realize that it's going to be more difficult and it's going to take you a little bit longer um, if you don't already have the financial wherewithal um, to be able to take down, you know, lots of deals at a discount or the networking, especially if you're just getting started, it's just going to take you some time to slow down. Um, piggybacking off my first one, I would say people that are looking for appreciation, if growth is your financial goal, number one, then this is not the time to go in and buy a bunch of deals and think that you're going to create a bunch of appreciation because the housing market is struggling and it's likely that values will come down a little bit. So if you're just getting started or you're looking at single family homes, you know, it's going to be few and far between that you get deals that are going to have a lot of appreciation. If you're looking at multi and you can force appreciation and you know what you're doing, you've already been there and you can be successful at it, you know, growth is a great thing. But if you're if growth is your primary, it's going to be harder to do that in the short term and with single family homes for a while. Yeah, my next one, and we'll do one more. So uh, we'll do three each. So you got one more coming. My next one is uh, obviously I'm in California. Uh, I I interact with a lot of of you know kind of Bay Area and Southern California invest Southern California investors who go out of state or at least out of area. And I still run into a lot of people that decide going out of state, and the answer is it's cheap. And you know maybe they're even doing the work, uh, but they really failed. Right? Anytime, in my opinion, you're going out of state or out of area. The team that you build is equally important and takes the most time to build, right? You not only are learning the market, learning average and learning great deals, but you have to do the extra thing of building your network, right? We've added a bonus section to my course because I've never done out of state with other contributors, uh, Mike and Brian being, being two guys that, that, that have done it. But yeah, I, th I think the notion of being in a hurry and going out of state because it's cheap is, uh, is dangerous and, um, yeah, that's that's something I always caution. Oh, continue doing the work, grow your network, fly out there for heaven's sakes. If you're going to plop down tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, don't you think you should visit the city at least once and, and meet people and see what's going on? So get on, get your butt on an airplane, get out there. 
Absolutely. One of the things that I would be cautious, I'm going to cut tie kind of two things together, right? One of them you talk about is not buying an alligator because it's the only thing you can afford. A lot of times when people really want to get in and, and you're going to start seeing some motivated sellers and prices will drop, make sure that you're not buying a property that you don't know how to fill, especially if you're living check to check, right? A lot of us get started. We're living check to check. And then you go buy an alligator that takes every last penny that you have as the down payment. You hope that you can kind of fix it up, but you might have tenants that are losing jobs and not paying. You need to be really careful in what you buy and make sure you're buying quality assets right now. This is a time to buy quality assets that are going to cash flow. The tenants are going to be able to consistently pay their rent even through a recession. You're in areas with good jobs. Don't go in and buy bad properties in bad areas where tenants are going to struggle if you're already living check to check. Yeah. The last one for me is if you need to rely on an adjustable rate mortgage to make the numbers work, um, that's not something I I support, right? If the if the if the numbers don't work with 30-year fixed rate debt, the numbers don't work. Don't beat up your spreadsheet. Uh, or, you know, go to an adjustable rate mortgage because, oh, I'm going to refi in two years. Yeah, maybe. But I've seen many people get burned by adjustable rate mortgages. In fact, Canada, UK and Australia are suffering through some of that now um, because most of their loans are adjustable rates. And it worked for 40 years. For 40 years, you can look at the trend and go rates are lower every year. I don't think that would be true uh, for the next couple of years. But uh, but who knows? I just I don't want people making that bet. I don't want them adding that risk. Uh, the deal works today or it doesn't. Uh, you know, that's a big one for me. What do you think? Yeah, on the residential side, for sure. I mean, I, I will say this where you've done mostly fixed mortgages through your investing. I've done mostly mortgages that are commercial. So they're only fixed for about five years and then they reset. So that's pretty standard on investment properties. If you've already got 10 properties and you can't get the Fannie Freddie, you know, 30 year fix without paying quite a bit higher. I think that if you've got a, a longer term mortgage, but it has a rate that resets, resets five years out, generally economic cycles are about five and a half years and a recession lasts about 10 with a recovery for about 18. So if you can lock in a longer term loan, a 20, 25 year AM, but it has a, a rate that'll adjust in five years, that doesn't worry me so much. Yeah. If you're in a commercial market, this really isn't for you. This is this is that person getting that first deal, that house or or, or whatnot. So uh, sure. Anna, you do a lot of amazing work. Uh, how can people follow you, get your coaching program, you know, all of that good stuff? How would they do that? Great. You can follow me at reimom.com on my website. On social media, it's Anna Kelly, REI Mom on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And don't forget, she's got an amazing playlist with hundreds of hours you can binge watch. You can go back to when Anna had a job, right? <laughs> Anna had a job in the first, I don't know, 20 or 30 videos. We actually had her the day she retired. We had a conversation. So it's it's a lot of fun. So thank you for We've everything. Been doing Anna. this for four years. So find us here every Wednesday. There you go. Thank you.